Uh, okay, good morning. So let us continue the lesson. So let me just recap a little bit about what we learned before. So do you remember what was the notion of the unit circle? So you have a coordinate system, x, y. You take the origin as the center of this circle, and the radius of the circle should be one length unit. So you draw it here. And then for the trigonometry, we also associate a positive direction and a negative direction for our circle. So by convention, if you remember, the counterclockwise was positive. This uh, clockwise direction was considered to be negative. Moreover, we also had uh, associated a point on it, consider this point as the origin of the circle. And whenever I have an angle, because you know that in geometry, if I have an angle alpha, it is at least zero degrees and at most 360 degrees. So we do not have negative angles or angles greater than 360 degrees in geometry. Yes, but in trigonometry, we want to relax these two conditions. We want to talk about negative angles if necessary. We want to also talk about the angles greater than 360 degrees if needed. Yes? So that was, for example, I told you that every angle has two arms. By convention, the first arm is always here, and the second arm lies somewhere in these, uh, uh, somewhere here depending on the size of the angle that you are looking at and the direction uh, and the sign of the angle, yes? For example, if you remember, we talked about 30 degrees. What does this mean? It means that you will start from here and start rotating about the origin, 30 degrees and in the positive direction. So you start from here, for example, let us say I rotate up to here and then I stop here. And then uh, this is, considered to be positive 30 degrees. And every angle has an end point on the unit circle, which is important to us, okay? We discussed about that. I asked you, can you give me any other angle who's, is different, which is different from 30 degrees, but end up here? For example, I remember some of you told me, for example, 390 degrees. Is that also right? So you start here again, you rotate 360 degree, 390 degrees about the origin in the positive direction. Of course, if I start here and rotate one full round, it is not still covered because I cover only 360 degrees, so I have to go 30 degrees more. So I hope that you agree that I end up again here. So the, the fine, these angles are of course quite different. This is much bigger than this one, but the final point corresponding to this and the final point corresponding to this is exactly the same point. So is that clear? And we could talk about negative angles. For example, I could talk about minus 60 degrees. What does this mean? Again, I start from here. I start rotating about the origin uh, by 60 degrees, but in the negative direction. So I start from here and 60 degrees in the negative direction. For example, I will end up somewhere here. And this angle is negative 60 degrees. And the end point is here. Is that clear? So that was more or less the same thing we talked about. And we also talked about the general formula that generates this. Did we talk about that? Yes? Yeah. Yes. So do you remember, for example, if I ask you, can you write a formula for me that generates all the names of the angles that correspond to this point as the final point? So one of them, one of the names of this angle is 30 degrees. The other name is 390 degrees. For example, I can talk about 750 degrees as well. Yes, 750 degrees is also an angle that ends up exactly here. Why? Because if I rotate one complete rotation, it covers 360 degrees. If I rotate two, uh, two times, it becomes uh, 720 degrees. Then I need to continue 30 degrees more. So these three angles are quite different angles, but they have something in common. If someone asks you, what is that thing? You would say that all of them end up at the same point on the unit circle. Yes. Now, my question was that, can you write a formula for me 
that generates all the angles corresponding to this final point. Yes? Yes, so we said that, okay, we write 360 degrees multiplied by x plus 30 degrees. This was the <coughs> first version I remember. But then I said that if you write something like this, even though you have a good understanding of what is going on, but it is not complete, because then people ask what is x, so you need to specify what x is. Yes? Pardon? Uh, I don't understand the question. Yes, I have started with the origin, but I'm asking you, for example, I gave you three names ending up here, but I'm saying that, do you think how many, by the way, how many angles do you think it will end up at this point? Infinitely many, yes? So if I start from here and rotate one full round and add 30 degrees to us, if I start here and add one full round, of course, I will end up here again two full rounds, I will end up here. Even if I take the full rounds from the other direction, in the negative direction, I will also end up here, yes? So if I start here and go one full round in the negative direction, definitely I will go back to the same point, okay? So when I ask you, write a formula that generates all the possible names for the angles ending at this point, if you write this, more or less it is correct, but you have to specify what x is, yes? It's a whole number. Yes, we discussed about that. So is zero acceptable? Yes, because if I put zero, it generates 30. That's correct. Is one acceptable? Yes, it becomes nine, 390 degrees. Two is also acceptable. But is one half, for example, acceptable? If I put one half here, then it becomes 180 plus 30. It becomes 210. But 210 is not here. It's exactly in the opposite point. Yes, it's 210. Okay, so then you have to emphasize that where x is an integer. Okay, integer, this is the English name for the whole numbers, yes? Is an integer. Or uh, we will see that the set of integers are de is denoted by this symbol, z, with some extra line on it. And when you want to write x is an integer, it means that x, this symbol means belongs to the set of integers. So instead of writing this in, in this English sentence, you can write this in front. Okay. And then the other thing is I told you that usually it is a convention, even though it is not written anywhere, but this is the standard mathematicians use. If they want to denote a natural, an integer or a natural number, they prefer to use letter n or m or k or something like that okay they usually reserve x for the real numbers okay that is just an arbitrary uh, modification so i would say that where n is an integer so this will generate all the angles that we want here any questions so far and we also learned something about the properties of the point so let us say that i pick a random point on the unit circle let me call it P. Let me uh, let it, let x and y be the coordinates of that point. Do you remember there was a nice relation between x and y if the point is being picked on the unit circle? What was that relation? I want you to remember it. Yes? Equals to 1. So remember this. So if you have your unit circle, as I described here, if you pick a random point on the unit circle, it will have an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. The x-coordinate and the y-coordinate of every point on the unit circle will satisfy this simple relation. Yes? Okay, so that was more or less uh, what we had before. But now let me try to define you what is the meaning of, uh, of sine, cosine, and tangent of a trigonometric angle. So I would say that let... So we can call this definition, yes? I want to define something for you. There is no concept here. I'm just defining a concept for you. Uh, sorry, there is, I'm just defining a word for you. So define, definition. Okay, so I would say let theta be a trigonometric angle, yes? Okay, 
then what I say, I would say that sine of theta semicolon equals to means is equal to by definition. Okay. Okay, so let me write something like this. Let theta be a trigonometric angle and let P with coordinates X and Y be the point corresponding to to the end point of angle theta. Okay? So now, sine theta semicolon equals to means equals to by definition y, number one. Number two, cosine theta is defined to be y. Three, tangent of theta is defined to be y over x. Of course, here we have this exception that x cannot be equal to zero because x is in the denominator. Corresponding, let me, to the angle, I need to take this off, to the angle, to the angle theta. The sentence was wrong. So let theta be a trigonometric angle and let P with coordinates X and Y be the, uh, the end point. Corresponding to angle theta. Okay, then sine theta is defined to be the Y coordinate for sine theta. Oh, sorry, I am making a lot of mistakes today. This is X. Sine theta is defined to be y, cosine theta is to be x, and tangent theta is y over x. Okay, so if I, let me, for example, let me ask you to calculate these numbers. Sine of 90 degrees, I want you to calculate these numbers for me, or determine these numbers. There is nothing to calculate here. Okay, so how should I do that? Yes? Yes? Uh, what is theta? Uh, an angle. Yes? So I have written here, let theta be a trigonometric angle. So what angle is that? So you know that I give you an angle. It might be negative. It might be larger than 360 degrees, or it might be somewhere between 0 and 360 degrees. The important thing is that you start here, and the final point will be somewhere on the unit circle. That point will, has, will have two coordinates, x and y. We, by definition, sine of that angle is defined to be the y coordinate, and cosine of theta is defined to be the x coordinate, and tangent theta is the division of y over x. That's just the definition. For example, if I ask you what is sine of 90 degrees, cosine and tangent of 90 degrees, the first thing that you need to do, this is, by the way, this is a very important lesson. If you don't learn this lesson, then you will have a little bit of problem in the rest of this chapter, which is a very long chapter, more or less. Okay, so here, if I ask you, uh, what are these numbers? What you have to do, you have to visualize this picture in your head, and this is the origin, A, okay? one arm of the angle, you imagine it always here, and then you need to find the final point corresponding to the angle given to you. Yes, so what you do, you start from here, you need to find 90 degrees. So you start rotating, 90 is positive, so you have to start in the positive direction. When do you end up? So you start rotating, and then you will end up here. Do you agree? Yes, so this is the angle 90 degrees. And this is the final point of that angle. What you have to do, you have to read the coordinates of that point. So what are the coordinates of that point? What is the x-coordinate? Zero. Zero. And what is the y-coordinate? One. Okay, and now sine is by definition the y-coordinate and cosine by definition the x-coordinate. So now if I ask you what is sine of 90 degrees, you will tell me the y-coordinate, which is one. 
If I ask you what is the cosine of 90 degrees, you will give me the x coordinate. And if I ask you what is this one, what is your answer? y coordinate is 1, x coordinate is 0. So it becomes 1 divided by 0, which is, which is what? Undefined. Yeah, so this is undefined. So this is why if you take your calculator and punch tangent 90 degrees in, you will see that you will get an error message. So this means that is not defined. Yes? And by the way, if you have calculator, it's extremely important to put this number in. If you get 1, it means that you are in the correct degree mode. If you get something else, you need to switch your calculator for the time being into the degree mode. Yes? So I, I think if you want to use your calculator, it is better to check it right now that if sine of 90 degrees is not 1 on your calculator, it means that your calculator has been set up on the radian mode that we will study later. Okay, so that's very simple. Is that right? Okay, so we want to complete this table. So here, there are some famous angles in trigonometry that I want you to know about them. So we started with... Zero. So let me see, where should I put 0, 30, 45, 60, 90? So 90, I want to put it here. So sine of theta, we calculated it to be 1, cosine is 0, and this is undefined, yes? We will complete this table. Okay, but let me give you another angle and ask your opinion about that. So let it be probably the simplest possible angle. Let me ask you, what do you think about these numbers? Sine of zero degrees, cosine of zero degrees, and tangent of zero degrees. Okay, so what are these numbers? Okay, so let us repeat. The first thing that you have to do, you have to imagine something this in your head, and then start from the horizontal line always, and find the final point corresponding to the given angle. But the angle is zero degrees, so it means that you start here, you do not rotate at all, or you rotate zero degrees. So what is the final point now? Yes? A. a. And then you read the coordinates of the A. What is the coordinates? One, X is 1, and this is 0. So don't conf get confused. Sine is, by definition, what? The Y coordinate. So sine of 0 is 0. Cosine of 0 degrees is 1. And what is tangent? Tangent is x, uh, sorry, y divided by x, which is, which is, zero. Uh, no, it's defined, because I need to divide y by x, yes, in this problem y is zero, x is one, so it becomes zero over one, but zero over one is zero, a fraction whose numerator is zero is zero, a fraction whose denominator is zero is undefined. Yes, but that is zero. So then I complete this table here. So let me write zero degrees here. Sine of zero degrees is zero. Cosine of zero degrees is one. Tangent of zero degrees is also zero. Yes? Okay, can you tell me what is what about 180 degrees? Can you visualize it in your head? Yeah, the picture is up there. I want you to talk about sine, cosine, and tangent of 180 degrees. So, yes? Sine is zero, cosine is minus one, and tangent is zero. Zero, yes? Why is that? Because for 180 degrees, again, you have to start here, yes? But then you have to rotate 180 degrees. So you rotate and then come up here. So the final point is this point, and then you read the coordinates. The x-coordinate is minus 1, the y-coordinate is 0. And then by definition, the y-coordinate is sine, which is 0. The x-coordinate is cosine, which is negative 1. And then uh, y divided by x is again 0. Yes, is that clear? Okay, what about 270 degrees? Can you imagine that as well? Yes. 
Yes. So where is 270 degrees? You will start from here. You rotate here 90, 180, you continue rotation. So I hope that you agree this is 270 and this is the final point. So what are the coordinates? So the coordinates are? Zero and negative one. So sine is the y coordinate, which is minus one. This one is? Zero. And this one? Undefined. Yes. And then the other one, do we really need to calculate this? 360 degrees is exactly the same point as zero degrees. Yes. So as far as sine, cosine, and tangent are uh, considered, the numbers are exactly the same because the final points are the same. If the final points are the same, sines are the same, cosines are the same, and tangents are the same. So you just copy and paste this column here at the very end. Yes. Okay, there are three more angles that are famous. I, this table will always be given to you in the exam, so you don't need to memorize things. By the way, for these uh, angles that I have written, it should be a matter of seconds that you visualize and find it, okay? But for these three angles that I want to write, I start with 45 degrees because it is simpler, okay? You need to know these angles are famous. These numbers that I put on top, you need to remember that you can find information about them in the formula sheet, okay? So for 45 degrees, what is your suggestion? I want to answer the same question that I answered for the other angles, but this time I want to do it for 45 degrees. So what should I do? So let me just start the beginning. So the first thing that you do, you need to imagine at the unit circle, okay? And then what you have to do, you start from here again, you go 45 degrees in the positive direction. So this becomes exactly in the middle because the whole thing is 90. And then you have a point here. So let me call this point P. It has two coordinates, X and Y, which is not as easy as before to read them. Yes. So you need to find them some way. So this angle is 45 degrees. Okay. The question is that what is X and what is Y? Because if I know x and y, I put y here, I put x here, and then I divide them, I will find also tangent, yes? In this case, I think tangent is easier for you to immediately tell me. What is tangent, can you tell me, yes? Yeah, why is that one you can answer? Because x and y are equal. Do you agree with me? Because 45 degrees is exactly in the middle, so what we understand is that x is equal to y. Yes. So if X and Y are equal, even if I don't know the numbers for them, I know something. Y over X is 1. Because if two numbers are the same, when I divide them, it becomes 1. On the other hand, what was the definition of tangent? It was exactly Y over X. So immediately we realize that tangent of... Uh, let me change the color. So tangent is 1. But what about x and y because if i want to know what is sine and cosine i need to know the value for x i also need to know the value of y so how can i find x and y yes yeah exactly that's it so how many unknowns you have you have two unknowns. You don't know X, you don't know Y. How many relations you see in front of your eyes right now? One relation. One relation is not enough to solve for two unknowns. I need two relations, yes? But I already told you that this relation is always true, yes? It doesn't matter which point on the unit circle I have, always X squared plus Y squared is equal to one. So this means that I have a system of equations on the one hand, I know that X and Y should be the same because this is 45 and it is exactly in the middle. On the other hand, for every point, not just this point, for every point, I know that X squared plus Y squared should be equal to one. Is that right? And then using these two equations and solving the system, I can find X and I can find Y. For example, what can I do? Uh, 
because x and y are equal, in the second equation, instead of y, I put x. So x squared, I copy and paste it, and then I have a plus sign here, but instead of y, I again put x. So it becomes x squared is equal to 1. Yes, and then what happens? It becomes 2x squared is equal to 1. Yes, then it means that x squared is equal to 1 over 2. Then it means that x is, x is equal to, what should I write? Plus minus, that's extremely important. Do you remember we discussed about that before? 1 over 2. But then this can be written because that's a division. I can write square root of the numerator divided by square root of the denominator. So this becomes what? Plus or minus 1 because the square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 2, I have to keep it exact. Okay, so there are two answers. But of course, it is clear that 45 degrees is in the first quadrant. And in the first quadrant, x cannot be negative. Yes, so this means that only the positive answer is acceptable. And when x is equal to this number, because y is also equal to x, y is also equal to that number. Yes, is that clear? So what we do, we can just write these numbers there. So this number is 1 over square root of 2. This number is also 1 over square root of 2. Yes? Something that is good to know is to... I don't know which one your book has chosen because let me tell you some rule. If you have... If A is positive and you have 1 over square root of A, you can write this slightly differently. So what you can do, you can write 1 over square root of a and rescale it by this a little bit strange fraction. First of all, do you agree with me that this equality holds? Because square root of a divided by square root of a is just 1. And if I multiply my number by 1, I will get the same number. So the equality holds. Okay, but what is the benefit of that? 1 times square root of a is the square root of a. Square root of a times the square root of a is a. Okay, usually it is better to have no radical sign in the denominator. It's better usually. So anyway, this I want you to know. 1 over square root of a, if a is positive, is always equal to square root of a over a. So it's a good idea to have this in mind. Okay, if of course a is positive. So this is why some books, instead of writing it as 1 over a square root of 2, you might see they are writing it as a square root of 2 over 2. The same thing here. Yes? So I don't know which one your book has chosen, but this is these numbers are exactly the same. So is that clear? Okay. Now, another angle that we want to learn about is 30 degrees. And then finally... 60 degrees, okay? But for 30 degrees, it is a little bit more uh, complicated, okay, than as before. So you have to be a little bit creative, okay? But the idea is the same. So do you have any problems so far? Is that understandable for everyone? Yes? What? Yes? How do you become an A instead of a 1? Square root of a times the square root of a means a square root of a to power 2. Yeah, but how did you get the uh, fraction to divide This one? Yeah. No, this, there are two type of questions, you know. There is no why. I am doing something, you need to follow the logic is right. Yes? And the reason is that this is, I'm just proving this formula for you. I am proving that 1 over a square root of a can also be written up in the form of a square root of a over a. Okay, you might say why, then I can answer you. Okay, I would say that, do you agree that this equality holds? I don't fully understand it. No, you don't fully understand why I am doing it. Okay, this is the question that you have in mind. So, Babak, how do you know we should do this? Okay, the answer to this is that I have experience and I have done it before, so I know what to do. Yeah, I just want to understand the principles. No, the prince, there is no principle here, yes? He, this is called rationalization of the denominator, yes? This, this sign in mathematics is called a third sign. 
yes, or sometimes people call it the radical, okay? But this is more common, okay? Rationalization of a fraction means write a fraction equal to the same fraction, but without having a search sign in the denominator. Okay, so that's the question. I give you 1 over a square root of 2. My question for you is that. What's your name? Uh, Gabriel. What? Gabriel. Gabriel. So, Gabriel, can you write a fraction which is equal to this, but there is no third sign in its denominator? Is the denominator the lower one? The lower one. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm inverting it. No, you, 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 if you invert, you are changing the number. That's exactly what I'm saying. So, for example, if I say 1 over 2, if you invert it, it becomes 2 over 1. But 2 over 1 and 1 over 2 are not the same numbers. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. So, if you invert it, of course, you solved apparently the problem. Yeah. You got rid of the third sign, but there is one problem here, a very big problem. This number and that number are not equal. My question was that, can you give me an equal fraction to the old fraction, but without having a third sign in its denominator? This process of doing this is called rationalization. Okay? So my question is that, can you rationalize this? Okay? And the point is that I want to get rid of the third sign. So one, com one thing that comes to your mind is to multiply this by square root of 2. But of course, if I just multiply the denominator by square root of 2, again, I am changing my number. I want to keep my number the same without having any third sign in the denominator. So if I multiply its numerator by this number to get rid of the square root sign, I have to multiply the numerator as well. Okay, now if I ask you, do you agree with me that what you see here is equal to this, then you have to say yes. Why? Because the square root of 2 divided by square root of 2 is just 1, and I am multiplying my fraction by 1, so nothing will change. So this number that you see in front of you is exactly equal to the previous number that we have. Yes, but is it? beneficial here, I would say yes, because then when I multiply this by that, it becomes square root of 2. When I multiply this by that, it becomes square root of 4, and the square root of 4 becomes 2. So what does it mean? It means that I started with 1 over the square root of 2. I had the third sign in the denominator. I ended up with a number which is equal to my number, but without having the third sign in the denominator. Of course, I paid the price. I had the third sign now in the numerator. Okay, that's it. What I'm doing it. I just want you to understand, this idea can be repeated for any positive number, not just two. So this is good to remember that 1 over the square root of a can also be written as the square root of a over a. That's it. Yes? Okay, let us go for 30 degrees now. The 30 degrees is a little bit harder. Uh, do you have any idea how to do that? So if, if I start with 30 degrees, so what should I do? So I need to imagine again the same setup. I have the unit circle, but this time I rotate. My picture is very bad, excuse me for that, but it's probably understandable. So you start from here and go to 30 degrees. Okay, the point is P, X, and Y. Again, my question is, what are these numbers? Yes, but this is not as easy as before because in the previous case it was 45, it was exactly in the middle, so I could understand immediately that X and Y are equal. But here, of course, my picture is probably not very good, but anyway, this is, let's make it a little bit smaller. Okay, so here, so this is 30 degrees. Okay. But anyway, I need to find x, I need to find y. So what is your suggestion? One equation I already know. What is that equation? I'm testing your understanding, so be with me. So what's an equation? Yes. Yes, so this is always the case. So x squared plus y squared. How many unknowns I have? I have two unknowns. How many relations I need then? I need two relations. One of them I know. I need to find the other one. So here you have to be a little bit creative to find the other one. So let me help you. 
Okay, so what I do, I find the mirror image of this point with respect to the x-axis. So what will happen here? So try to use your intuition. My picture is really awful, okay? Okay, I hope that you can understand what I mean. If this is really precise, what do you expect for the size of this angle? Yes, just say it. 60 degrees. No, not just this angle, blue one. 30. So in total, it becomes 60 degrees. Don't say it is minus 30. You are right, it is minus 30. I'm talking about the size of the angle, not the angle, okay? So the, le the measure of the angle is 30. The measure of that angle is also 30. So this, I write 30 here. Don't get confused. The name of this angle is minus 30. I am talking only about the size of the angles. Now my question for you is that I have a right angle triangle here. Yes. Oh, sorry. I have a triangle here, not right angle. But can you tell me what type of triangle is this? Yes, here. Yeah. It's an equilateral triangle. Why is that? Yeah. All sides are the same length. So how did you understand that all sides are the same length? It's not clear yet. This one, if you say, is equal to this one, I buy it. Because they, these are radii of my circle, so they have to be equal. Okay, but why they are there, yes? Yeah? How? Yes, because this angle is 90. If this is 30, how much is this? It's 60. Yes, the same is true for this one, also 60. So this triangle that you see here is really an equilateral triangle. If it is, a, uh, uh, if, if it is an equilateral triangle, if I call this O, if I call this P and if I call this Q, do you agree with me that OP should be equal to OQ? Is that understandable? Okay. But if I ask you what is the OP, OP is the radius, so it is equal to 1. Yes? Okay. But what can I write? Uh, sorry, I said OQ. That was my mistake. I want to write PQ. OQ is also correct, but it doesn't... Uh, give me a good relation. So PQ, do you agree if it's an equilateral triangle, all the, tri all the sides are the same, so OP is equal to PQ. But can you read the coordinates of Q for me? You don't know X, you don't know Y, but let us assume that I give you the number X, I give you the number Y, then I ask you, can you find these numbers for me? I told you that Q is the mirror image of this with respect to X axis. If the coordinate of this point is X, what do you think about the coordinate of the mirror image, Q? Yes? Minus Y? No, the coordinate, X coordinate. I'm talking about X coordinate. Oh, yeah, it's also X. It's also X. Do you agree? Because the X coordinate of this point and the X coordinate of this point are the same because they are on the vertical line. Okay, and what about the Y coordinates? It's minus Y. Whatever that number is, this number is opposite to that. Yes? Is that clear? Okay. So now, if I ask you, can you find this length based on x, y, x, and minus y, how much is this length? Of course, you know it's 1, but I want you to write it in terms of x and y. Yes? Uh, length is 2y. Two it's 2y. Two Do you agree? Because from here to here is y, the length, not the sign. This length is y units. This length is also y units. So the total length is how much? Is 2y, yes? So this is 2y, and they have to be equal, okay? So I have an equal, so from here you immediately realize what is y, y is 1 half, yes? So when y is 1 half, you put it back into this equation, so then you have x squared, plus instead of y you put one half squared is equal to one, then you have only one single unknown you can find. It. So how can I do that? It becomes x squared plus one over four is equal to one. I move one over four to the other side. It's one minus one over four, but one minus one over four is how much? Is three quarters, yes? And then you want to find x. So x is plus or minus the square root of this number. The square root of 3 is just the square root of 3, but the square root of 4 is 2. But which one is acceptable for this angle? 30 degrees uh, is here, so it is still in the first quadrant, so x cannot be negative. So the negative answer is not acceptable here. You only take the positive one. So x becomes the square root of 3 over... Yes? 
So now if I want to complete this, what should I write for sine of 30 degrees? What should I write here? Yes, just say it. One half. One half. Sine, do you remember? It was the y coordinate. What should I write for cosine? Square root of three over two. Square root of three over two. And for the tangent, I have to do the calculation here. So the tangent of 30 is, do you remember the formula? It's y over x. This is my y, this is my x. So y is 1 half divided by three, square root of 3 over 2. But these two and that two are simplified, so it is 1 over square root of 3. Yes? So this number is 1 over square root of 3. But what can I write for it? Do you remember this rule again? I clean that. What can I write for 1 over square root of 3? Some books write it in this way. Some books can write it in which way? Can you tell me? Square root of 3 over? Over 3. Sorry. Square root of 3 over 3. Okay. Is that clear for everyone? Yes? Okay. Now, I don't want to uh, uh, do this one again, but I want to find a rule that I want to convince you later. We, we can do the same thing here for 60 degrees, but I want to teach you something else. So if you have any questions so far, please let me know. Is that clear? Yes. Uh, when we have plus minus, mm -hmm. uh, then on the test, should we like, write with words why we only choose the positive? Yes, one? in principle, yes. So in principle, I get this one because if you conclude from here that this is only positive, so it means that you don't know that you have to put plus and minus. And when you put plus and minus, you need to write in words why you want to choose the positive one only. I just said it orally, but in the exam you shouldn't write it in the written form. Okay, so now, uh, so let me clean this. Uh, so let me ask you one question. So do you remember we had trigonometry in the right angle triangle before? Okay, so something you should check if you are a good mathematician, you have to be worried a little bit because I have changed my definition of sine, cosine and tangent. We already had a definition for sine, cosine and tangent if the angle is acute in the right angle triangle. So if you are curious, you should be a little bit worried. What is that worriness? For example, let me just make my question clear. So let us say angle theta is 30 degrees. Okay, so what can I do? In Math 2C, you could draw a triangle. Yes, one of the angles is 30 degrees and this is a right angle triangle okay so let me call it a and then what you need to do do you remember if you wanted to calculate sine of 30 degrees you need to go and find the length of the opposite side let me call this a s and then divide it by the length of the hypotenuse so let me not deviate if i call this one a this is a let me call this one b this is b so then what you have to do you have to write b over a. yes so in Math 2C, if you want to uh, measure the angle, the sine of this angle, you draw a right angle triangle so that one angle is 30 degrees and then measure the length opposite to this angle, call it B, and measure this hypotenuse. There are two numbers, you divide them, that number becomes sine of 30 degrees. Yes, but in the new setup, what you have to do for finding sine 30 degrees? You have to do what? you have to imagine the unit circle and then you have to start rotate 30 degrees and find that one and then you end up with this point x and y and then you will tell me sine of 30 degrees is equal to y is that right so i introduced two methods this method you knew from math 2c gives you this number this new method assuming that you have done this gives you this number. But you will be in trouble unless, what happens? Do you understand what I mean or not? Not probably, yes? 
Because you know that if a person in Math 2 c calculates sine of 30 degree, they calculate it with this one. They take the ruler and measure this length, it becomes a number. They take the ruler and measure this length, it becomes a number. And then divide the numbers, they get a number. Yes? But let us say that you didn't learn this in Math 2 c and then you want to calculate sine of 30 degrees using the method we learned here. What do you do? You draw a unit circle and then you start rotating 30 degrees, you end up with a point, and then what you need to do, you need to measure or calculate x and y, and then you say that sine of 30 degrees is y. Yes? These are two different methods for calculating the same thing. We will be in trouble unless they are equal, exactly. Yes? So I have to convince you that don't worry, for the angles that we have overlap for acute angles, it doesn't matter if you use this old method or the new method, the answers are the same. But this is something that I have to address. Is that clear? Because then I have trouble. If someone use this method, that person will find an answer. If someone use this method, they will find a different answer, which is ridiculous, yes? So we have to convince ourselves that no, always these people find the same answer. Can you tell me why? No, they are not equal. I intentionally drew it much bigger so that you can see that they are not equal. But how do you prove that they are equal? Yes. None of them. A is much probably bigger than Y. A is also the same. So I want to convince yourself that this is always the case, that they are really equal. But why? First of all, tell me, do you understand there is a question or not? Yes? Do you agree there is a question? Yes? And then we should say that, okay, we have to answer this question because we will be in trouble. If someone uses math 2 c method to calculate sine, and I use this math 4 method to calculate the same sine, and I have two different answers, then what, which one is the real one? So this is a very bad problem in mathematics. If something like this in mathematics happens, then mathematics will collapse, okay? So you should have internal consistency in mathematics. Yes, here, do you want to answer why they are equal? Which triangles? Yeah. This triangle with which triangle? The triangle you need to complete it, yeah? So which triangle you are talking about? Probably you are talking about this triangle. This is a small one, yes? Yeah, so let me ask you, if this point has coordinates x and y, can you tell me what is this length? Everyone says something, yes? What is x? What is the, this length? Y. y. Yes? Now, here yourself, can you tell me why this small triangle that you see here is similar to this big triangle here? So there was a theorem in Math 2C. Do you remember the uh, similarity? Yes or no? Two triangles are similar. If two angles of one triangle or equal to two angles of the other triangle. Have you seen that before? Yeah. Okay, so these two triangles are similar. Why? Because one angle here is 90, one angle here is 90. One angle here is 30, one angle here is 30. So these two triangles, the big one and the small one, are similar because two angles of them are matching. Okay, if two angles are, if the triangles are similar, then the ratios of corresponding sides are the same. Yes, so it means that, for example, Y, over B is equal to what? This length, which is 1 over A. Do you agree? This triangle and that one are similar, so the ratio of corresponding sides are equal. So this side corresponds to this side, and this side corresponds to this side. So the ratio of Y over B is equal to the ratio of 1 over A. Do you agree? So this means that A times Y is equal to B times 1. And then if I divide by A, Y becomes B over A. So this Y and this B over A are really the same. So it doesn't matter which way you use to calculate. Okay? But the calculation here are limited because we can only calculate the, uh, the sine, cosine, and tangent of acute angles, okay? 
but in trigonometry, we not only can calculate sine, cosine, and tangent of acute angles, but we can also calculate the same values for negative angles and for angles greater than 190 degrees, yes? So that is why working, in, uh, working with the unit circle is uh, better for us, because we have more tools, okay? So that is one thing that I wanted to address. Okay, so now let me ask you one question here. This is very important. Okay, so let me just go back to Math 2 c and let me write this angle theta. This is B, this is B, and this is A, and this is C. And let me call this A and little c. So if I ask you, this is theta, let us assume that this is also alpha. If I ask you, can you write sine theta for me in this right angle triangle, the answer is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. If I ask you the same question for cosine theta, what's your answer? C over A. And for a tangent? B over C. Do you agree? Now let us practice a little bit more. If I ask you the same questions for sine, Alpha, cosine, alpha, tangent, alpha, what will be your answers here? What is sine alpha? Opposite one, which is C, divided by the hypotenuse, which is C over A. What is cosine alpha? B over A. And what is tangent alpha? C over B. Do you agree? And there is some very nice relation here. You see, this fraction repeats itself here. So it means that sine of this angle is equal to the cosine of this angle, okay? And the other way around, cosine of this angle is equal to the sine of that angle, okay? So what is the relation between alpha and theta? Yes? Yeah, so they add up to 90. So if I ask you what is the relation between these two, do you agree with me that alpha plus theta is 90 degrees? Yes, there is a name for this pair of angles, this pair of angles. If two angles add up to 90 degrees, they are called complementary. I want you to know these names, okay? A pair of angles whose sum is equal to 90 degrees is called a complementary pair of angles, yes? Now, this is a very important rule in this course. If I have two complementary angles, sine of one of them is equal to the cosine of the other one, and vice versa, okay? Is that clear? So this I want to write as a remark. So let me uh, write it, it's important. Sine of an angle is equal to, look, I, I should write the sine of an angle, sorry. I should write the article there. So the sine of an angle is equal to the cosine of its complement. And of course, vice versa, yes? So this is a very important rule. This is not in the formula sheet, but I want you to send it to your memory right now, okay? And the motivation is coming from this picture. So, so for example, can you complete this table for me with this new method now? Yes, because we learned how to do this before using the unit circle, but now you learn something more, which I really want to write in your notebook and try to send it to your memory. Okay, so, do you agree with me that 60 degrees and 30 degrees are complementary angles? Why? Because 30 degrees plus 60 degrees is 90 degrees. When we just learned that sine of one, one of them is equal to the cosine of the other one and vice versa. So if I ask you what is the sine of 60 degrees, the sine of 60 degrees is equal to the cosine of its complement. And the cosine of the complement is square root of 3 over Two. So what you need to write here is the square root of 3 over 2. If I ask you what is the cosine of 60 degrees, you will tell me cosine of 60 degrees is equal to the sine of its complement. So that is also 1 half. 
Okay? And one more thing. What happens for the tangents? How they are related? One of them is B over C. The other one is C over B. The English name for these kinds of fractions, we say that this one is, a recip is the reciprocal. Okay? So if you have two fractions, one of them is being flipped. You don't say that I flip. You say that this fraction is the reciprocal of the previous fraction. So if alpha and theta are complementary angles, the tangents are reciprocal. Yes? So it means that the product is how much? The multiplication of these two numbers is equal to 1. If I ask you what is the reciprocal of, of 2 over 3, what's the reciprocal of 2 over 3? It's 3 over 2. And of course, if you multiply 2 over 3 by 3 over 2 is 1. So then we can also add something here. The product of the tangents of a complementary pair of angles is equal to 1. Of course, I have to be careful a little bit. Why do you think I have to be careful to write such a statement? Why do you think? Okay, let me ask you. If I ask you, is 0 and 90 degrees complementary, what is your answer? Is 0 degrees and 90 degrees are complementary? Yes or no? Yes, because the, add, the sum is 90 degrees. So they are complementary. But you cannot say that tangent of 0 times tangent of 90 degrees is 1. Why? Because you have it on the table. Tangent of 90 degrees is unfortunately undefined. So this is an exception you need to remember. So none of them should be 0 and 90 degrees. So if they are defined, yes, they are uh, reciprocal of each other. Yes? Um, so how was 30 and 60 complementary on the circle thing? No, the circle thing is different. We'll come back to that later. But if you want to see that two angles are complementary, you don't need to visualize. You just need to add them. If the sum is 90 degrees, they are complementary. Oh. Yes? Yes. But that's a good question because can you tell me what is the complement of 100 degrees? This question is ridiculous in geometry. But in trigonometry, I really can ask this question. What is the complement of 100 degrees? minus 10 degrees. We couldn't say that in geometry, but we can say it in trigonometry. So 100 degrees and minus 10 degrees are also complementary. But that question that you are asking is relevant now. How can I understand the sine of this is equal to the cosine of that one? Okay? Um, might be you asked, I just answered that, okay? But before doing that, let me complete this one. Can you complete this number here for me as well? Then we have that table, and that table will be given to you in the formula sheet. So, uh, 30 degrees and 60 degrees are complementary, and we just learned that the tangents of complementary pairs are reciprocal. Yes? So it means that if the tangent of this number if the tangent of 30 is this number, what do you expect for the tangent of its complement? Yes, please? What? The square root of 3. The, the reciprocal of that one. Yes? So then it becomes what? Uh, square root of 3. So this, this table is complete now. Yes? And as I told you, I don't need to, I don't uh, ask you to memorize these numbers, but I want you to have these numbers in your head that these numbers are famous in trigonometry, yes? Yes, is that clear? Okay, so now, this is a good question. How can I understand that the sine, can you convince me why the sine of 100 degrees is equal to the cosine of minus 10 degrees? This, I cannot sh use this, this, con this method. Because I do not have 100 degrees in a right angle triangle, I do not have negative 10 degrees there. But can you convince me 
If, by the way, if you ask me, Bobak, do you know this number? No, this is not one of those famous numbers that I have in my head. So if I ask you what this value is, I don't know. If you ask me what this value is, I still don't know. But I can claim that these numbers, whatever they are, they are equal. Okay? So why they are equal? Try, let us try to understand. It's a good exercise, by the way. This is part of this lesson. Okay, so let me try to convince you that these are the same. Can you help me to do that? If I want to visualize and understand this, what, should, what is the first step? Say something, please. You are very silent. Yes, yeah, say, say something. What should I do? It's not possible you don't know. If you don't know, we have to stop the lesson now, okay? So if I want to convince myself about this equality, what is the first thing that I have to do? The first thing is to take my pen, okay? The second step. Yes? Yeah. So why don't you say that? So I just draw the unit circle. Yes? With its coordinate system. This is the first thing that I do. Take my pen, I draw the picture, okay? What is the next step? So I need to understand where are these angles. Yeah, so the first thing comes to my mind, I try to find the final point of 100 degrees approximately because I am not precise. Okay, so I start from here, I rotate 100 degrees in a positive direction, so I definitely pass this line because this is 90 degrees. How much I have to pass? Uh, how, how much I have to pass? Yes, you are right. This becomes 100, this becomes 100 degrees. From here to here is how much? 100 degrees. From size point of view, what is this size? What is that? La 10 degrees, yes? Okay, so, I, I, okay, keep it in mind. So this is the final point of this angle. Okay, now tell me, what should I do next? What should I do next? I need to find minus 10 degrees as well, okay? So I start from here, rotate 10 degrees, but in the opposite direction. So what happens, uh, this is important, the reason that I ask you that question, because Symmetry arguments are very important here. So if you draw pictures very good, you immediately see them. So from size point of view, this uh, is 10 degrees, size point of view. Of course, this is minus 10. But the important thing here is size. I end up here. But what is the size of this angle you sent me? You told me that. What is that? 10 degrees. Okay. So you see, so far, so good. Okay. Now, I don't know. Here, for 100 degrees, let us say that the coordinates here are x and y. Because we don't know that, okay? What are these values? I don't know. I only know x squared plus y squared is 1. I don't know anything else. Okay, let me tell, ask you, is x positive or negative? Is y positive or negative? Positive. Okay, so you know that. Now, my question for you is this. If somebody gives you x and y and asks you to find the numbers for this, can you do that for me? The question is, this is the skill you need to learn for this course. Someone gives you x and y. Okay, you don't ask questions, why are these numbers? Let us say that someone gives you x and y values for this point. Can you use his numbers to find the coordinates of this point for me? Okay, so how? For example, if I draw this line from here to here, can you tell me what is this length? How much is this length? Y. It is y. Do you agree? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, but how much is this length? <coughs> it's not x. Length cannot be negative, yes? x is a negative number. If you say this length is x, then you are saying that this length is negative. But you know that the length here is negative x, the length. Yes? Okay, so that's the length. I cleared that. Now, can you, so this is from here to here is y. Okay, now I do the same thing here. Of course, you need to have a good picture in front of your eyes. Okay, this triangle, and that triangle, do you agree they are congruent? They are of the same size exactly. Yes? Yeah. So this means that if this length is y, what is this length? No, what is this length? It's y. Yes? And then it means that if I want to write the coordinates of this point, what do I write? 
What is the number coming first? This length is y. This triangle and that triangle are of exactly the same size. So if this is y, this is also y. But what should, where should I write y here? Here or there? I should write it here. Because y for this point is its x-coordinate. So I have to write y here. Okay? Now, can you tell me what should I write here? What? You told me minus x, yes? No, the, this is a coordinate. Okay, so what is this coordinate? From length, from length point of view, this length and that length are the same. Okay? So that is the length. But is x positive or negative here? So, so what, uh, I, just, I don't want to confuse you. What should I write here? Do you, do you say minus x? I, I need to write x. Is that right? But why, is, why should I write x here? Because when I write x here, is x positive or negative? negative. x is negative, because x was negative. If I write minus x, it means that I am making it positive. But is this y coordinate positive? No, the y coordinate is negative. So I should write exactly that. So, this is something I really want you to practice. It is not that hard. So, if x and y are the coordinates of this point, y and x are the coordinates of that point. Is that understandable? Is that clear? Okay. Now, let me ask you one question. If I ask you, can you give me sine of 100 degrees, what is your answer? You go to the final point of 100 degrees, and then you read the y-coordinate of the point. What is the y-coordinate of the point? What is the y-coordinate? <laughs> Say it. Y, yes? And now if I ask you, can you tell me cosine of minus 10 degrees, what do you do? You go and find the final point, okay? But cosine is which coordinate? X-coordinate. Here, what is the x-coordinate? Y. y. So sine of 10, 100 is y, cosine of minus 10 is also y, so they have to be equal. Even if I don't know what the value of y is, I don't care. This is equal to y, this is also equal to y, so they have to be equal. So that rule that I mentioned here, even though I motivated you here on this uh, setup, but it is still working on that setup a little bit more complicated. So now there is 100 degrees, for example, uh, if I say, cosine of 120 degrees is equal to sine of minus 30 degrees. Do you agree with that? Why? Because this angle plus this angle is equal to what? 90, 90 degrees. So two angles adding to 90, they are called complementary. So the sine of one of them is equal to the cosine of the other one. Is that clear? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. So, yeah, we still have time. Okay, so what we need to do... Yes, questions? There are some things that I want to complete here. So one question here for you. So here, I draw a circle, the unit circle, and then let me ask you one question here. I say that, okay, this angle, let us say that this angle, whatever it is, is theta. Okay, I give you theta as a number. Then I ask you to find the coordinates of this point. Can you do it for me? So let us assume that I give you the value for theta, 120, 135, whatever it is. I give you that one, and then I give you the calculator, and then I ask you to find these numbers. So can you tell me what do you do with your calculator to find these numbers? 
It's a very easy question. I hope that everyone answers me, yes? Just wait. How many of you know the answer? If you don't know, I have to commit suicide, yes? Because that is the whole thing that I was discussing this lesson. I give you the calculator. Okay, let me make it clear. Okay, so it might be you are good with numbers. I give you 140 degrees, okay? I give you the calculator, and then I ask you, fill up these gaps for me. Explain what do you do. No, anyone else? If you don't, or if you are not volunteer, I will pick, okay? Randomly from your names, from the list. So I will say, for example, number 22, and then I go, who is that number 22? I will ask you, okay? You have to be stressed a little bit. You're enjoying life too much. Yes, so what is that? Yes? No, t take much simpler than that, okay? It's much simpler than that. Of course, you can start from scratch and come. I give you the calculator, and then I ask you to fill up these gaps. How is that possible you don't know? Yes? No, no, not you. Anyone else? Okay, do you want me to pick up a, num a person? Okay, so what is that? Yes? Just write sign 140 and then you get wired. Yes, so why don't you say that? <laughs> so my questions are not usually tricky. I'm not asking tricky questions. I'm just reviewing things that we have learned so far, okay? So I told you that the Y coordinate is what? If this is the sign of the angle for which this is the end point. If I ask you, for uh, this is the end point of which angle, what do you answer? 140. So now if I ask you to calculate y for me, what you need to do is just to calculate sine of 140 degrees. This is not a famous angle, this is not in your table. So this is why I provided you with the calculator. Yes, so you put sine of 140, it becomes a number, and then you fill it this up. And then if I ask you what is the x value, what do you say? Yes, is that right? Okay, so this is why uh, I draw this picture for you. I want to send it to your memory somehow, okay? So if I give you an angle, wherever it is, it doesn't matter. So let us say this angle is theta degrees, and this point P. So what can I write here? What can I write there? Now everyone. Yeah, here, what can I write? Cosine theta. Cosine theta. What can I write here? Sine. Sine theta. So this, you need to draw it in your notebook to send it to your memory. So this is some picture that you have to have in mind, okay? Now my question is that, and I have a different question. I ask you, I give you theta to be 753 degrees, okay? And then I ask you, without calculator, Calculate this one, this combination for me. So just wait a little bit. So the question is that I picked up a random angle and I ask you calculate the sine of that angle and raise it to power two, do the same thing with the cosine and add the results. If you ask me, Bobak, do you know this number? No, I don't know it at all, don't know it, but I know about the sum of this combination. What that sum is and why? Yes? Why? Power of two is one, yes? So, it, yeah, exactly, this combination is one. So this is extremely important identity, even though if I don't know the angle, I know something. If I have a theta, Whatever theta is, I don't care. I know that the final point lies somewhere on the unit circle. And we just learned that the x coordinate is cosine of that angle and the y coordinate is the sine of the angle. On the other hand, still it's not on the board, but on the other hand, we know that the coordinates of any point on the unit circle, say x and y, satisfies this equation, yeah? Satisfy this equation. Okay, so here, cosine theta squared plus sine theta squared should be one, regardless of the value of theta. 
Because if you choose a different theta, the location, this will change, but still it will be on the unit circle. And that is always true. So that's an extremely important property, okay? Sine of any angle to the power of two plus the cosine of the same angle to the power of two is equal to one. I really want to memorize that. Unfortunately, this is in the formula sheet as well, but this is very ridiculous to be there. This is the most important formula of trigonometry. So sine of an angle to power two plus cosine of the same angle to power two is equal to one. And then usually in the book and in math books, they don't write this. They summarize it like this. So if you see this symbol, this does not mean sin squared of theta. Sin squared does not mean anything. A sin is not a number. Sin theta is a number. That number is squared. So this, if you see, it means this. Plus cosine theta squared is equal to 1. So this is extremely important relation. Okay, now I want to test your understanding, okay? So what is what do you think about this? Sine to the power of 2, 50 degrees, plus cos, uh, sine to the power of 2, 40 degrees. What's the answer? Of course, this is not the same thing. It is extremely important. One of them should be sine, one of them cosine, and the angles should be the same. But that is not exactly according to this. Uh, yes? Well, Why? Uh, because it's uh, sin 90 if you add them together, which um, uh, sets the unit circle to y is 1. No, I, I want you, uh, that's not wrong, that's correct, I accept it from you, but a little bit better. I want you, I don't want to start everything from scratch, I want you to, okay, yes? Is it the sign of the units? 50. Yeah, exactly, yes, because I intentionally chose these angles, what are these angles called? Complimentary. Complimentary, why? Because 40 and 50, when added together, it becomes 90. And I told you, this is extremely important to have it in your memory. Otherwise, you will not be able to solve a lot of problems. So we told that. Sine of one angle is equal to the cosine of its complement and vice versa. Yes? So if the question mark is here, do you agree that I can write this? Everyone agrees with this equality that I have written? Are you happy with going from here to here? What I have done, I copied and pasted this one here. I just put the plus, but instead of this expression, I wrote this expression. Can you validate my uh, this? Yes, why? Because 40 and 50 are complementary angles, and we just learned that the sine of one of them is equal to the cosine of the other one. So instead of sine 40 to the power of 2, I am allowed to write cosine 50 to the power of 2. Okay, now is this exactly this relation or not? Yes, because sine of an angle to power 2 plus cosine of the same angle to power 2, no matter what point number is, this becomes always equal to 1. Is that right or not? Is that clear? Okay. So let me ask you another question. So what is the number here? Sine 1 degrees to power 2 plus sine 2 degrees to power 2 plus sine 3 degrees to power 2. And then you continue this list plus sine 89 degrees to the power of 2 and plus sine of 90 degrees to the power of 2. So what's the answer to this? Yes? So you, it, this, these dots are clear for you, yes? 1 degree, 2 degrees, 3 degrees, 4 degrees, 5 degrees, I continue until 89 degrees and 90 degrees. And then I square all of them. And then I'm asking yet, what's the answer to the sum? Hmm? No. Why it should be 1? No, 
It cannot be zero. So if why it cannot be zero? Why it cannot be zero? Yes, they are all positive. Yes, because whatever this number is, I am raising it to power two, so it's positive. So a bunch of positive numbers cannot end up with zero. Yes. Yes. I think you understood. I don't know the exact number, but how did you calculate that? Yeah, that's correct. But how did you do that? For example, instead of the last, so what we can do, we can write sine 1 degrees to power 2 and sine 89 degrees to power 2 together. Because I am adding a list of numbers, so it doesn't matter the order I am adding them. Okay, so what I decide, I decide to add this one to, the, to this one. Yes? Why is that, do you think? Because 1 degrees and 89 degrees are not complementary. And then we just learned, what is this number now? In your head, you can replace sine of 89 with cosine of 89. So, sorry, but by cosine of 1, and then it becomes sine 1 squared plus cosine 1 squared, which is 1. Okay, the same thing happens with the next combination. Yes, I can take this one plus, what is the previous term? 88, yes? Uh, yes? Do you agree that? So this combination is 1 for the reason that I mentioned, because 1 and 89 are complementary. But here, 2 and 88 are also complementary. So this number it becomes also 1, yes? And then I can continue this list. Okay, wh where do you think this list will end? So let us continue. Yeah, that's also tricky. So what should I write? So I continue, for example, I reach to sine to the power of 2. Okay, so 44 degrees. The next one is sine to the power of 2, 46 degrees. Do you agree? If I continue this list. Okay, so what are the things left? Yes, one sign 90 degrees is left. I didn't calculate. One more thing is also left. Sine 45 degrees. Do you agree? So, so it becomes plus sine 45 degrees squared plus sine 90 degrees squared. Yes? So let me ask you again. Is that understandable what I'm doing? I'm just taking this one. Momentarily forget about this. I take this one and that one. I take this one and one to the last, and then I will continue. I hope that you agree with me. I reach at some point here. Which angle is not being calculated? 45 degrees is excluded now. It's not in my list yet. So I have to add it here. One more number is that number. I, don't, I have to add it here. Yes? But how much is this number? Is one. How much is this number? Is one. And then one, one, one. How much is this number? One again. Why? Because 44 and 46 are complementary. So that's also one. Okay? So can you tell me how many ones I have? Yes? 44. 44. Is that right? One, I have the first parenthesis, this starts with one. The second parenthesis, this starts with two. So this means that this is the 44th parenthesis. Yes? So I have, the answer becomes 44 times one, but plus... We also have that table in front of you, yes? That will always be given in the formula sheet. Sine of 45 degrees is how much? Is 1 over square root of 2 to the power of 2, yes? And then plus, what is sine of 90 degrees? It is in that one, it is 1. So 1 to the power of 2. So that's your answer. Yes? So you made a small mistake. I think you forgot about this. So this is 44, and plus 1 is 45, but there's also a number here. So this becomes 45, and this becomes 1 over 2, which is 1 half. Yes, is that clear? Yes or no? Okay, so that was a hard question. But uh, it's not that hard if you know the idea. Uh, is that clear? Let me ask you one more question. We have time or not? No. Okay, let me write something here for you. We solve it next time. Okay, so let us say that I want the logarithm in base 2 of tangent 1 degrees, okay? 
So what does it mean? It means that I calculate tangent of one degrees, it becomes a number, and then I take logarithm of that number in base two. Okay? And plus logarithm of tangent two degrees, base two, and then I continue this list plus logarithm of tangent 89 degrees in base two. Without calculator, I want you to calculate this number. Yes? So logarithm of tangent 1 to the base 2, logarithm of tangent 2 to the base 2, logarithm of tangent 3 to the base 2, and then you continue on to the logarithm of tangent 89 to the base 2. And then I'm asking you, if you add all these numbers, what is the exact value of this without any calculators? Okay? So that we, we will start. If I forgot, the next time, please tell me to start from here. Any questions? Okay, thank you.